Hello, Commanders, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Journey Across the Galaxy. We are continuing on our way out to Beagle Point. Uh, we're starting in space, which is kind of weird for this series, if you haven't been watching so far, because I normally try to land on a planet. But I'm trying to squeeze two episodes in a row right now, so yeah, uh, we're kind of continuing on our way. Uh, oh, we didn't do the... Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a. I do not have a particular topic in mind for today's for today's video. I, I generally try to have something to talk about, but as I said in the last episode, this is kind of a last minute uh, trying to squeeze in some recordings because I realized, oh, I have technically supposed to have a couple of days off right now. Oh, single biology. Uh, I generally try to go for at least two. I'll get to my intro here in a second. I'm just trying to trying to get focus on getting this done. Uh, another biological. Hmm. Unfortunately, we're not finding the kind of planets that I want to find, though. Uh, so if you're just joining us now, we are currently working our way out to Beagle Point at the furthest edge of the galaxy. We've already crossed through the center of the galaxy to uh, and visited Sagittarius A-star, the massive black hole at the center of the galaxy. Um, and we started way back from the bubble. Let's see, while we're doing that, I'll bring the map up so you can see what we're doing here. So we are right here. We are heading out to this area out here. We've already crossed through the center of the galaxy here and started from the bubble way back there. Our primary goal is working on our exobiology rank, trying to get up into the elite status for that. Um, and then also our secondary goal is to make a lot of money so we can go buy a fleet carrier and eventually do exploration in our carrier out in the black. Uh, the goal is to kind of just meander through the galaxy with all of our ships available so we can just fly whatever we want. Uh, position of the fleet carrier somewhere and then kind of fly around to random systems nearby. Do do exploring and use that money that we're getting from that to keep our maintenance up and all that stuff on the fleet carrier. And it would also be kind of cool if we could get to where we have maybe a group of players who want to come along for the journey and use my carrier as kind of their outpost and follow along. Uh, you know, maybe start up a live stream where once a week where we move the carrier once a week and do a couple of jumps. Uh, I think that would be a pretty good way to do some to uh, to engage with the community. But we're still kind of a long way off from that because uh, we still have a couple hundred jumps to our next waypoint, and that's still not even Beagle Point itself. So depending on how we uh, depending on how much money we make on our on on this trip to Beagle Point. Um, will determine what we're going to do next after reaching it. If we make, I mean, if we somehow make all of the money that we need by the time we get to Beagle Point, then we'll just kind of fast, we'll, we'll kind of book it back to the bubble and try to uh, go ahead and get our fleet carry and get started on that. Realistically, though, I don't imagine that's going to be the case because, uh, you know, it's, we really want to have around 7 billion credits so that we can a buy the fleet carrier b outfit it and c have enough kind of left over to feel comfortable that we can maintain that carrier for an extended period of time if necessary so for the new viewers we do you've, you've been watching it so far i didn't start on a planet this time so i haven't had time to kind of go over it but we generally hop into a system pop the discovery scanner to see how many bodies are in the system then uh we'll do our fuel scooping Stop, uh, come to a stop, do our full spectrum system scanner to see if there are any high value planets, those being water worlds, earth like worlds, and ammonia worlds, uh, to do atmospheric scans of those if they are available. And then if there are 15 ish bodies or less in a system, you know, I, I fudge the number depending on how I feel at, a, at any given time. Uh, we'll do a full-on scan of each individual body in the system to see if there are any biological signatures available. I generally set a minimum of two biological signatures on a planet to make sure that we're not flying all that way just to find some bacteria. And uh, that's kind of the plan. I also try to have something to talk about before we get started so that you guys have something to listen to while I'm doing this because the repetitiveness of just jumping and scanning and jumping and scanning and jumping and scanning is going to get really boring. So having, uh, having some kind of continuing dialogue as we continue. Continuing dialogue as we continue. That's some quality narration right there. 
<laughs> Having some kind of continuing dialogue as we fly around, you know, makes the journey a little bit more bearable for those of you who, especially for those of you who are trying to follow the journey continuously. Uh, from what I understand, that's actually a fair number of you guys, and I appreciate that very much. I'm glad you guys are enjoying the content. I'm glad I'm able to provide you guys with something that you know, encourages you to watch, and especially those, of, especially those of you who, for whom the series has encouraged you to get back into the game, uh, you know, it's nice to know that what I'm doing is having a positive impact on people. I'm, I've been a gamer my whole life, uh, I mean, I guess 30 plus years at this point, uh, having started as a kid, and, uh, you know, I, I, I've never really lost my love for it, but, you know, as you get older, Especially when you start to realize that pretty much most video games are the same thing over and over again, just with a different skin on it. Uh, maintaining your enthusiasm for video gaming gets a little bit more difficult, especially when you're just trying to play by yourself. Now you find different things that catch your attention, like right now, uh, I'm really heavy into farming simulator, so, you know, um, I've been spending a lot of time playing that, but eventually I will get bored with it and it will be relegated to the... I didn't. I think the I think the number was high on that one. That's why I disregarded it. I think. I'm only halfway paying attention because I'm trying to ramble on and keep the conversation going. Um, but eventually, I'll get bored with it. Um, you know, I'm the kind of person who gets super obsessive over a video game for a period of time, and then eventually I get bored with it, and then I don't play it really. I don't really play it for for a very long time. But because I'm doing a YouTube channel, I've basically turned. Uh, I'm trying to turn. I, I can't say I have turned. I'm trying to turn video gaming into a full time job. Um, you know, but I need this. I need the. I need the uh, income stream to make that, oh, come on. I need the income stream to make that something that's reasonable, and that takes time to build a channel up to that, assuming, you know, assuming my channel is good enough that it can get to that point. I would love to get to the point where I'm able to just do this full time, but, uh, you know, that just, that really depends on if enough people are interested in my content to provide the watch time that I need, or to support the channel, or, you know, any number of different things that, uh, you know, are necessary to make a channel successful. So here we go with another single biology planet. Not really trying to go after single biology because those are almost always, oh, there we go. All right, we're gonna go land on that planet and that's probably gonna be it for the episode, depending, oh, there's a couple there. Okay. We're gonna keep scanning though, just to make sure, man, there's a lot of, there's a lot of two biology planets right here. Uh, but they're all really far away. We were we were gonna go to that, but I guess not. Are these all far away? Oh, uh, all right. So I generally set a ten thousand light second limit because that's it. Just it takes a long time to travel that distance. So we're moving on to the next system. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we're gonna have to leave those behind. I was really excited about the idea of going to uh, land on a planet and get some biology, but unfortunately, not going to happen right now. But that's okay. That's okay. It's not that big of a deal. We'll just move on. Hopefully, we'll find something. Uh, and then I've completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> I don't know what I was just talking about. <laughs> oh, making money on YouTube. So, you know, um, there's something about... It, there, there's, there's obviously a research thing that you can do to try to figure out the best way to, you know, make money, attract people's attention, all that kind of stuff. But to be perfectly honest with you, I don't, I don't want to chase numbers. I don't want to chase all that stuff. I want to kind of just be me, and if I make it, I make it. Okay, so this is telling me uh, this is gonna be another one of those dual. This is gonna be another one of those water world situations. I mean, I guess since there's, I guess since it, I normally don't like to do 20 bodies, but we're looking for these water worlds anyways, so we might as well just go ahead and do a full-on scan. That's fine. Um, I just, I kind of want to, I don't, there's something not genuine about morphing yourself to fit the desires of what the, what research tells you you should be. 
And, you know, I don't necessarily want to do that. Oh, these are all far away, though. All right, never mind. Moving on to the next system. As much as I'd like to do that, it's, that's, they're all too far away. Uh, being, I think, I think especially as we continue moving into this new era of, you know, everybody being able to be whatever they want, however they want, uh, AI and all this other stuff just coming out, I think more and more the, the base nature of who we are as human beings is going to continue to yearn for something more genuine. There's so many channels out there where, you know, you're being fed content that is just content. And I think the reason why some of these content creators, and especially, I think one of the reasons why streamers are so popular is because we live in a society now where personal interaction has become... I don't want to say less common, because you can still go out and meet people and do all of that kind of stuff. There's just more and more people who don't really want to go out to do that. They want to feel like they're socially interacting with somebody, but they don't want to have to put the time and effort into getting ready, making yourself look presentable, going out to a place, dealing with traffic, dealing with jerk, the, all the jerks that are out there. It's much nicer to just be able to sit at home and watch somebody on a screen to feel like you're getting that social interaction that you're missing by not going out and actually being around people. Now clearly, it, that's not a really good replacement for, you know, genuine in-person interactions, but for most people it's enough to get by. I think I think that we're uh, okay, I'm trying to turn towards that. And, and I think that's I, I'm kind of hoping and kind of banking my YouTube future on the idea that I just need to be me, get on here, play games that I enjoy playing, be how I am in real life, albeit, you know, an, a relatively amplified version of who I am, so that you guys are getting some kind of a genuine expression of, you know, being, hanging out with a person playing a video game. Too much of the content on the internet is so heavily produced that you're, you, you don't feel like you're getting any kind of real, like, you're not getting anything, you're not getting something real. You're either watching something that's been heavily produced to the point where, you know, it's clear that it's highly scripted and highly. I mean, one of the reasons why reality reality TV, I think, was as was as big of a thing as it was, is that it felt like it was more genuine, even if it wasn't necessarily a hundred percent genuine. Uh, you felt more, it felt more relatable because it didn't feel like it was highly scripted and highly contrived. All right, another single biology planet. How far? Oh, these are all far away again, though. All right. Moving on to the next one, then. Oh, we've been getting really unlucky with the signatures in this episode. Uh, it's Reality TV, I think, did as well as it did because it felt a little bit more genuine. It felt a little bit more like real-world experiences because it didn't have this molded artistic thing that was set up to kind of format things in a way that was efficient for production, not necessarily what people are looking for. Um, the best movies that you watch are the ones that make you feel a genuine connection to a person, not necessarily, like, have you ever tried, have you ever, have you ever read, read a book or watched a story or, you know, participated in, participated in any kind of story-based thing where, the, per, the 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 writer or whoever was making it didn't really do a good job of making you identify with the main character or any of the characters in the story. The story itself might have been super interesting, but you're just you're really having a hard time latching on to the story because you need that human connection to the people that are going through that story because we just have a hardwired need to have that that social that social latching on to each other. <laughs> I know I'm kind of taking a really long time to labor to, to to kind of detail the point I'm trying to make, but like I said, the the idea that I'm going after here with my channel is is I'm just going to try to be me and hopefully enough people enjoy the me that I am and not necessarily the me that I'm trying to pretend to be. Hopefully enough people enjoy that and enjoy the gaming that I do to turn that into a living. Only time will tell. <laughs> All right, so we're getting towards the end of an episode here. 
on my day off videos, because they're extra videos, I generally try to make them a little bit shorter. So we're going to start looking for a planet to land on, because this is my last video for my quote unquote weekend. So let's get a, we'll get a system scan done here on the next one. Hopefully we'll find something pretty soon where we can find a body to land on. I'm also kind of running against the clock because my wife gets home pretty soon and I would prefer to have my recording done before she gets here. All right, here we go. This might be a good system. At the very least, we're going to land. Assuming there's bodies to land on. Okay, let's see here. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? He's all far away again. Ugh, they're always so far away. Come on, give me a system I can land in, please. We're like right there. So, you know, <clears throat> most of that was just me trying to continue to talk. I don't necessarily, I've, I've covered all of this before. It's just sometimes you have to default back to standard patterns of discussion to fill the silence and not have, and, and then, you know, I also have to keep in mind that the majority of people who come into these videos have not, uh, have not seen any of my videos before. So you don't know who I am or what I'm about. So every once in a while, you kind of do have to go back through and, you know, re, re explain why things are the way they are it sucks for the people who actually watch the content on a regular basis but uh it's kind of n all right we're not we're not messing we're not wasting time trying to find that <clears throat> they really need to do an update on that full spectrum system scanner it's, it's just it's too annoying to use should not have to spend that much time they, they, they really should be like I don't mind the interface that they've come up with but they should really have a, a tab a tab function that allows you to tab to the individual items in the system in the system you've already popped the discovery scanner you should already know where they are I shouldn't have to manually move my move my cursor around the map to try to find that stuff that should be something that's relatively easy to implement. 16 bodies. That's right around the number we want. We definitely need to be finding a place to land. Okay. Alright, that's relatively close. I'm just trying to focus on getting these mapped as quickly as possible so we can go land. Ooh, a lot of stuff here. Why are we turning? Okay, that's really difficult to do. Why is it turning? That's really annoying when it does that. <laughs> okay. Doesn't seem like we're gonna find any biological signatures here. Normally we would have found at least one before this point. System scan complete. All right, are any of these? Oh yeah, a lot of these are landable. So we'll just go to this closest one and get ourselves on the ground and that'll be it for this episode. Try to get this done as quickly as possible. <clears throat> So anyways, you know, there's lots of people out there trying to make it on YouTube. Uh, it would be arrogant of me to think that I deserve to be one of the ones that actually get up there to the top. I appreciate the compliments for those of you who say that you enjoy my content, and especially those of you who say that my content is underrated as far as the YouTube algorithm is concerned. But, you know, at the same time, there are, I think there are like millions of channels out there, and, uh, you know... Even with my channel where it is right now, according to the subscriber count anyways, I'm in the top 8% or something like that of channels, and I'm still barely making any money at all. Uh, I'm struggling my way towards my first hundred dollars, is what I'm saying, is kind of what I'm talking about here. So, you know, it, it takes, 
success, monetary success on YouTube is exceedingly rare. Maybe the top 1% of channels probably are gonna make enough where you could actually make a living doing it. And you know, that's a, you know, that's a very, that's a very difficult number to meet. I'm gonna try to land on the Terminator over here so that we can uh, have a nice view of the star. We should be relatively close to it too. Let's get down here. Let's try to hurry up and land and end this episode. Got to really focus on your throttle when you're doing this because you don't want to overspeed and end up crashing into the drop drop area. That causes damage, and then also just makes you take forever to get back down to the planet. You really want to make sure you're always getting into this glide here, because that takes you pretty close to the surface pretty quickly. Hopefully there's a flat spot over here that we can land. Yeah, this area looks relatively flat. Got about three kilometers down to the surface. Get our landing gear put down. Flip over because... Flip around to the sun. Crap, crap, crap. <laughs> Anyways, hopefully you guys are having lots of fun. Be sure to click that like button so the YouTube algorithm knows that you are and sends the video out to as many people as possible. If you are not subscribed, please consider doing so now so that when the next video comes out, it will show up in your video feed and you'll be able to watch it as soon as it becomes available. Channel members do get early access to all of my content, so be sure to click that join button. Check out the list of options available there and decide if any of those are right for you. Uh, if you're not interested in a continuing membership, there is the super thanks button that allows you to do a one-time contribution. Every little bit helps and uh, your support is greatly appreciated and a critical component to turning this into a full-time gig. So again, thank you very much for your time. Hope you guys have been enjoying the journey. And I'll see you for the next one.